Okay, greetings lovely viewers, and welcome to the intersection of punk music and queer identity, episode 8, so titled, by Shellyality, since we're gonna talk about the Buzzcocks' music and their bisexual lead singer, Pete Shelley. Uh, so the Buzzcocks formed on the heels of the Sex Pistols in 1976 after seeing the band live. Uh, Pete Shelley uh, and Howard DeVoto uh, comprised the founding members of the group with uh, Mr. DeVoto leaving right after the Buzzcocks' first EP in 1977, which left uh, openly bisexual Pete Shelley as the prime primary lead singer. Similar to when Mr. DeVoto had left the band, I'm going to be taking a step back in this episode and allowing my close friend Lyndon to help us with the queer analysis of the music. How about you introduce yourself, Lyndon? Hello folks, my name's Lyndon Walker, I'm an illustrator, and I also really love music, so I'm here to jam with you folks today. Excellent, thanks so much, and here we go folks, we'll be listening to a few songs and analyzing how Pete Shelley has been proliferating the bisexual agenda, why, why did I, why did I use that word? Anyways, he talks about the bi agenda in his, all, in his lyrics since the first wave of punk in 1976. We'll be starting out with the song Ever Fallen In Love parentheses, with, you, with Someone You Shouldn't Have uh, from the Buzzcocks' second album, Love Bites. So, and it's credited to Pete Shelley, so he wrote, definitely wrote the lyrics of this one. And if you think about the title Ever Fallen In Love with Someone You Shouldn't Have, it already implies a forbidden feeling. And seeing as the song dropped in 1978, it's not a stretch to assume that it it could be indicative of a queer love interest. But we'll give you the full rundown while we react to the song. You ready to listen to this one? Let's get down to it. All right, sounds good. So, right off the bat, we see commentary on nat natural emotions, excuse me, which a lot of people use as an argument against gay or homosexual feelings saying that a natural quote-unquote attraction to a man or a woman in, from a man or a woman, so on and so forth, you know, paired together <laughs> yeah, yeah, is no, absolutely. what naturally happens and that homosexually is unnatural, so that could show some of like the quote-unquote closeted feelings that are being expressed in the song, not that it is closeted, yeah, but it shows that mentality of the external world affecting one's own few own viewpoints of themselves and how they should feel about their own emotions. Yeah, no, absolutely, that kind of internalized biphobia for sure. And I think he wasn't actually fully out in the, when this song was written. Mm. He came out publicly maybe a couple of years later. I see. But yeah, so for sure. And then even that next line, right after spurning his natural emotions, it's you make me feel like dirt and I'm hurt. Yeah. And that could be both bouncing off of the uh, internalized biphobia kind of vibe. but but also perhaps the other person not even acknowledging it as a realistic mm. interest be because homosexuality or same gender love is looked down upon. Yes. Right? Or, or even a bi person being attracted to multiple genders is looked down upon. It's yeah. Like, you know, there's kind of the argument of like, well, you just gotta pick one. Right? Indeed. So even in that sense. Yeah. Let's, let's keep going. Let's continue. Now, not to interject so quickly again, <laughs> but I feel like this is still prevalent today where wanting to bring attention to homosexual feelings and emotions is looked down upon. Mm -hmm. Even a number of couples that I'll hear about online or in the news or whatnot, however you hear, get your media, will talk about having homosexual partners or like, you know, say for example, a queer couple, two men, and one of the men does not want their family to know about their partner and as opposed to coming out to them and saying it's like hey this is the love of my life they're like oh this is my roommate and if you put up a fuss about wanting to be acknowledged as a romantic partner or even wanting to be out in general it can be very frightening and also be met with distaste, for lack of a better word. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's definitely something that's still prevalent, you know, wanting to keep the relationship a, a secret for fear of being ostracized. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm totally, uh, that's exactly what I'm 
getting from from those those lyrics as well and it's like even though it's a secret it's better to have someone mm-hmm. than to and that and hence I run the risk of losing you and that's worse so you'll deal with the with the secretiveness just for the the sake of having somebody because yes. it can be it can also be so hard to find somebody who's queer and interested in you especially yeah. in the 1970s I would imagine absolutely so, and it, but you're also absolutely right I'm glad you brought it up that it's still almost the same today in, yeah. in a lot of cases indeed even for some reason I just thought of Heartstopper I don't know if mm-hmm. you've seen it yet but there was kind of a similar situation where uh, the first kind of couple were introduced to yes. one of the boys in the relationship wants to keep it a secret even though it's oh. like 20 2020 or 2021 yeah (laughs) or you know even though it's modern times indeed they don't there's still a social stigma attached to it yeah both then and now so yeah so we've got we've got a ways to go sometimes yeah but pete shelley was on top of it in 1978 yeah he knows what's up all right we're about to reach the chorus so let's go let's go for it so with the chorus so obviously the namesake of the song falling in love with someone you shouldn't have, like, you know, homosexual relationships. If you're a man, you should fall in love with a woman. If you're a woman, you should fall in love with a man. But, you know, not you don't always feel like that. But what I also find fascinating is unless we find out what's to blame, especially during that time, they would try and pin someone's homosexuality on some sort of cause or failing, whether within the person, within the parents, or their upbringing or environment, and that can definitely be a real pinnacle of shame or bring in the idea that you can somehow, quote-unquote, fix the homosexuality, where you will no longer become homosexual, aka, think, transversion therapy, which is awful and horrific, but that's definitely something that has and still does happen, and as I mentioned earlier, in a relationship where, say, one of the individuals doesn't want to be publicly acknowledged as homosexual, they can't really have that full openness with each other unless they both realize that, as the lyrics say, unless we realize that we are the same. Yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to be able to, while navigating those relationships that are kept so secret, you have to figure out that you actually found another queer person, and, uh, to actually touch back on what you said about finding the the external source that very cool pointing that out i i don't think i caught that on my i've, mm-hmm. I've listened to this song many times and that's why <laughs> i'm here to provide a new perspective well let's see do you want to move along to the next song because it looks like we're just going to be repeating the the chorus a few times and the the natural emotion he, he's really driving the point like sometimes you fall in love with someone you shouldn't have yeah and then and that's an overwhelming thought, and you can hear that within the song and its pacing. <laughs> 